want to show you. Watch what happens. Verse 13. Watch what's connected. 2 Chronicles 5, 13. So when they began to speak, and they said, for the Lord is good. If they could put up on the screen for other people to see. would be There you go. Fantastic. Okay, look at the bottom part of that verse. For they began to praise the Lord. And they said, for the Lord is good. For His mercy endures forever. What happened? Look at the, look at the word. Then. Then what? Then. Then. Did it happen before? No. Then the house was filled with a cloud. Even the house of the Lord. So what triggered the glory? Declaring God's goodness. Come on. What did Moses ask God for? Hey, Mo, God, God, I want to see your glory. Exodus thirty-three eighteen. What was the next verse? Okay, put up Exodus thirty-three eighteen. So on Exodus thirty-three eighteen, notice Moses' cry. Is this your cry? Those of you that are watching. And Moses said, God, I plead, show me your glory. Now, when God's glory comes, you know what happens? Lots of stuff. But it's a, it's a harsh judgment against evil. And it's a blessing to those that long for God like Moses. Did. Okay, now look at verse 13, 19. What was the next thing? Verse 19, and God said, answered him, I will make all my what? The first thing God could say about what was going to show up. What was the first thing that was going to show up? But what was the question? Show me your glory. And what was the first thing God said is going to manifest? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? We've had enough of bad news, harsh news, false news, fake news, lies. God is saying, listen, my glory is invading the earth. That's why you're going to see harsh judgments come to these people who call themselves elitists that (laughs) are building their towers of Babel, and God's going to come down and bust them all up and mess it all up. (laughs) So goodness is connected to glory, and I'm here to tell you that's where we are moving. So start saying that over your life. Man, God, you're good to me. Your mercy endures forever over me. Hey, God, over America, you know you're good. And your mercy endures forever over America. Well, guess what? What's connected to your decree? Glory. Glory of God. God's presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I don't know what else to do. I did what I was supposed to. I'm empty. but So... (laughs) All right, you know what? Let's do this. Go ahead and be seated for a minute. I want to just, I want to share something with you. Um, We're going to do this. So I'm going to have some people. We're going to pray over America. We're going to pray over the midterms, okay? And uh, we also need to pray for our conference. So I want to show you Matthew chapter 7 real quick. Verse, or no, Luke 11, sorry, 9 through 13. We'll put this up very quickly. I want you not to get stuck in in the way that you pray. Because, you know, I grew up years ago, and I loved this guy. I don't don't quite know whatever happened to him. And and if you know, it's all good. I pray he's well. But there used to be a guy named Larry Lee that had a, um, uh, when I first got saved back in 84, he had the, uh, the, the Lord's Prayer model, very powerful. And I used to pray that. And uh, <clears throat> so one day I was asking God, I said, Lord, is the Lord's Prayer the only model that there is? And the Lord said to me, he said, the model continued. So actually, let's back up to Luke 11, verse 1. The Lord said to me, he said, the, the model actually continued. And I went, what? So let me show you something that God was, Jesus was modeling. And it came to pass that when Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us. To do what? So what's the subject? Pray. As John also taught his disciples to pray. Now watch. So Jesus begins to teach a model of prayer. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
as it is in heaven, so it let it be on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Look at verse 5. And he said unto them, which of you... Now, he's still talking about prayer. And he still just told them the model of prayer. Now he's telling you the spirit or the attitude of how you need to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Are, are you following me? He said, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his journeys come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend. In other words, this isn't based on relationship. Yet because of his what? Persistence. His persistence, his importunity. He won't take no for an answer. <clears throat> That's where I'm at with America. I won't take no for an answer. Yeah. I recognize that all the people pulling their end time eschatology scriptures, I think those are great scriptures. I think they relate in a particular season. But this ain't the season. God's not on a, uh, a rescue mission. He's on an equipping mission. He's trying to get his church to occupy because he wants to release his glory and get the final harvest and demonstrate. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing. People always quote Matthew 24. Oh, there'll be earthquakes in various places, right? Wars, rumors of wars. But they never finish. Jesus said none of those things would bring the end or be the end. He said, verse 14, here's the sign. This gospel of the kingdom, what's the gospel? Good news. Shall, the gospel shall be preached, shall be promoted as a witness. Not just witnessing, hey, have you heard the gospel? Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? No, part of the gospel being preached as a witness is goodness and glory go together. It's saying God is so good that he'll heal your body. Let me demonstrate it and show you. Are you here? So it's preaching God's goodness with the demonstration of the supernatural. And then the Bible says, Matthew 24, 14, then the end will come. So there's a certain attitude, importunity, that he'll rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, though he will not rise. Okay, and I say unto you, now watch. Here comes another model. There are what I call four, four dimensions or four things that you can pull out now. It's not just the first part of the Lord's Prayer. There's four ways to get your, your prayers answered or four types of administration of prayer. Some people get stuck. They pray. I mean, I grew up that way. You know, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That came, God didn't even have any idea what I was praying and what it meant. Now, <clears throat> when I've traveled churches, notice what Jesus taught. Ask and it will be given you. That word really means ask and keep on asking. It doesn't mean ask again because you didn't think the first prayer took. So now you're just praying an unbelief prayer. That's not what it means. It means stay persistent. Stay with it. Keep thanking God for what you prayed and requested before him. And then it says seek. Now, seeking is waiting on God, listening, worshiping, praising. You know, sometimes I just spend hours just waiting on the Lord. And, and can I tell you, I fall asleep. I do. Many times when I'm waiting on God, I fall asleep. And I used to feel guilty. But then I started having too many dreams and visions or visitations. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how come I keep falling asleep? He said, don't fight it. In other words, there, you know when to fight it. But he was saying, don't fight it when you're entering into that restful place where your soul and your body is rested. Because it, it gets you ready for your spirit to begin to receive from God in the spirit. You know, because if your head, if your mind's just racing, you know, your body, you keep getting up, checking your phone, checking your watch, checking what time it is, you're not really waiting on the Lord. But when you're in that place, that's why I trained you how to pray down in your spirit. And I do that a long time so that I'll drift off into sleep and I'll go into vision or, or something Amen. Are you how many are still praying that way that I showed you? All right, let's practice that real quick. I want nights of prayer to also train you. Listen, we hit some stuff tonight, whether we pray again or not. Okay, so don't think, well, Pastor, we're gonna we need we need to pray. We just did. 
Okay. So I want you to learn something. Okay, now, how many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit? You pray in tongues. Raise your hand. Okay. Anybody in here, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you don't pray in tongues. We would be glad to pray for you and pray with you. Okay, good. We will pray with you. All right, anybody else? Be bold. This is a bold day. Right? They're being bold. They're taking dudes and dressing them up as women and then dragging kids there. And they're being bold and the church is cowards. You know, something's wrong. So let's, let's break that coward spirit. <clears throat> Ain't nothing... You know, to be shy about. If you don't pray in tongues, raise your hand. Let's get filled. All right, now here's the thing. So I want to practice real quick. Let's just pray in tongues quietly, okay? Okay, now, I want everybody to look at me. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your mouth, and I want you... To not open your mouth, and I want you as loud as you can, not opening your mouth, as loud as you can, give volume and begin to pray in tongues without moving your mouth or your tongue. Just pray. Let your spirit pray. Ready? One, two, three, go. Okay, how many are doing it? Where do you feel it? Point to it in your belly. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. How be it? He was speaking about the Spirit. So that's one of the greatest ways when it comes to seeking that you can just learn to pray out of your spirit and then just quiet down for a little bit. And then just talk to God in your spirit. Lord, I worship you. I honor you. And then watch. His voice will come. He'll show you things. There's three primary ways that God will come to you in the seeking. He'll come to you by something you hear or something you see or something you perceive. Remember on the day of Pentecost, what did they do? They heard a sound. Did they see something? Yeah. Tongues of fire settled upon the heads. Did they perceive something? Yeah. A rushing mighty wind. So when you get into that moment of seeking, it's not just worshiping, singing songs, listening to music. Sometimes it's just waiting. Oh, God, God, I'm seeking you. What am I seeking? I'm seeking to be with you. I'm seeking for you to speak to me. I'm, speaking, I'm seeking to have conversation. And I'll start off down there in my spirit. And I'll just lay before the Lord. And those are some of the most tender, beautiful moments that you ever have. Now, here's what I've noticed. I've noticed a trend in churches. They know how to ask. They know how whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he'll do it. He'll give it to you that your joy might be made full. But they don't know how to seek God. They don't know how to enter into worship. They don't know how to enter into waiting. They don't understand that dimension. And then I know people that they say, oh, we're just marinating in the presence of God. But then what comes out of their mouth is a bunch of unbelief because they haven't learned to pray the word in the asking. But then there's another dimension. He said, knock and it shall be open. And that's where you use your spiritual authority. That's where you use a battering ram and you absolutely just smack against the forces of darkness. You use your covenant rights. Amen. And you keep hammering it and hammering it and hammering it. You can do that in tongues. You can do that in English. Devil, I bind you in the name of Yeshua. Whatsoever is bound upon earth shall be bound in the heavens. I bind you. Loose your hand off of my life. See, you're, you're knocking your bam. Father, I come boldly to your throne. Are you, are you here? There's a, there's a different dimension. And then watch this. So <clears throat> keep going. Verse 10. For everyone that asks receives, and to him that seeks finds. And to him that knocks it shall be opened. And he goes on. And he starts talking, if any son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Now look at verse 13. We often overlook this. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give what? Spirit, Spirit to them. Now why is he mentioning now ask, seek, and knock? What is it, the context of that? Prayer. Is he still talking about answering the guy's question? Lord, teach us to pray. He said, all right, here's how you pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
People end it right there. They never go into the kind of uh, uh, fervency, opportunity, no nonsense, no quit that Jesus talked about with knocking at the door at midnight. Then they just skip right over, ask, seek, and knock, that there are dimensions of prayer that position you for results. And then he's still talking in the context of prayer about the Holy Spirit. That's part of your dimension of prayer or weapon is praying in tongues. And I tell you, if we would pray in tongues more, we would be shocked at how much would be released over our lives. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, I don't have anything else. So do you have anything that you want to pray? I feel like we did what we were supposed to. How many? I do. And I, I just, I'm not going to drag it out to drag it out. All right. So, Pastor Brendan, why don't you come up? You're going to receive the offering. Before I do, I want to mention, we'll talk about it a little bit more on Sunday. Could they put this slide up? Uh, how many businessmen are in here? And those of you that are watching, praise God. I prayed over a lot of businessmen. I think it was a few weeks ago. And um, it was really terrific. And um, so, Pastor Brenda, this is our second year that we've been uh, uh, honored to be invited with uh, Craig and Desiree. I think they were here. I saw them somewhere. Oh, you're right there. <laughs> okay. Like I couldn't get any closer. Um, would you stand up? So they are hosting this meeting right here. Uh, can they put it up right here in Omaha? And uh, look at their lineup of speakers. This is going to be fantastic. Uh, this is going to be Christian Business Conference July 28th and 29th at the Beardmore Events Center. That's about 36 in Cornusker, correct? And um, the, the featured speakers are Brendan and I will be there. Lance Walnow will be there. They've got a great lineup. Uh, you know, the Isaacs, if you haven't heard of them, they're powerful. So I just want to encourage you, if you are really, thank you guys, if you're really looking for how to be blessed and ignited in your business, I really want to encourage you to register at ignitecb.com. Is there information also out there as well? Praise God. And uh, it's going to be a, a great and powerful time. Father, I just pray that that will be a tremendous success for Craig and Desiree and what they're desiring to do for Christian businessmen, for the kingdom of God, Lord, for our city, for our nation, by empowering businessmen. And I pray, Father, that registration would go to a whole other level now, that you will speak into the hearts and the ears of people, that they will say, man, I've got to get there. I've got to be empowered. I've got to be ignited. I've got to be trained. I've got to be equipped. Lord, Kings and priests working together is what's going to finance the end time gospel. And I thank you for Craig and Desiree, Lord, who have heard that call and others that we're taking back the seven mountains of influence. It's not just about the church. It's about us affecting other places of influence within our culture and our society. So, Lord, let this be in a tremendous blessed conference. Every need, I pray, is met in full. They, they go over the budget in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Pastor Brenda, would you come? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, how many of you felt something? You know, it's weird. And I kept saying to, to <laughs> the team back there, they said, what do, you, what do you feel like we're supposed to do? I said, well, I started planning something earlier today. And I felt like the Lord said, no, just, just wait. You're going to. So I think that's always better. And, uh, you know, if, here's what I'm going to ask you to do, though. We didn't pray for, we prayed for America. I think we kind of touched on the midterm, but if we didn't specifically do that and you feel like we should have, then here's what I'm going to ask you to do since you feel that burden. is just before you go to bed tonight, take a few moments and ask God's blessing over America and ask God's blessing for a midterm miracle, not a midterm mayhem. Amen? I believe God wants to bring a miracle that's going to pull us out of this mess. Amen? And that's what we pray for, Father, in Jesus' name. All right, sweetheart, go for it. All right. Well, Lord. before okay. we get ready to 